Yeah, we're going to go um, to Q&A. And we've had some questions come in on Slido. Um, we can take some more uh, questions as we go along uh, on Slido with the uh, the code um, DQ Hub 1301. Um, but just to get us going, um, I'm going to ask some, a couple of general questions and um, to go around all four of you. Um, and I know I've heard some things already touching on this already, but what for you is the biggest challenge in doing data quality well? I guess we're defining what data quality well means there. So um, should we, does anyone want to start us off there? I don't mind starting. Rita, thank you. You were first. Um, I probably alluded to it in my in my conversation with, with mm. um, Rebecca, really, but probably um, for me, uh, senior buy-in. Um, getting that commitment from senior police officers and police staff to be prepared to invest and resource any work that you're doing around data quality. Um, you know, it doesn't ha data quality doesn't happen just because you want it to. Um, it requires quite a bit of effort, actually. I and mean, the rewards are enormous, um, but that would be my biggest challenge for policing would be that that senior buy-in. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd go back to something I, I mentioned in mine as well, and, and I think it's it goes back to being able to articulate what the data quality issue is and getting at the root cause to to stop it just being a generalist discussion that, that people don't potentially buy into or recognise as, as the issue. I think it's it's key being able to define it and um, to, to create that starting point for the discussion and always being able to tie it back. I, I think a bit like Theresa said then, being able to tie it back to the individuals to see how it impacts them and what's what's in it for them if they do improve the, 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 the quality that it isn't. Particularly with the NHS digital relationship where it's it's seen as the centre and it's collecting it for its own purposes. It, it's it's making sure that disconnect doesn't continue and you, you, can, you can relate it back to how it will improve at, at source. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Nicole, thank you. I think just to add to that, sort of, I think building on what Andrew said, it can be difficult to sort of know where to start. I think it can seem data quality can sometimes seem like this overwhelming thing, you know, with different dimensions and how do you measure it and and you know, well, do we define the rules against? In our case, it's the real world or against what what our specification is. And I think. It can just sometimes seem a bit daunting and overwhelming at, in that first step to, to even know how to, you know, bite off the first chunk. So I think that's definitely um, a difficult place to start. But I think that it's really important to kind of, as we've been touched on, kind of identify what that most important those important data assets are and where data, which aspects of data quality are the most important and, and start by improving them and actually if you kind of think in a kind of 80 20 rule where you know 20 percent of the time you can get 80 percent of the benefit that probably is the first step and, and we'll see the biggest improvements and then you can incrementally continue to improve after that thank you and simon yeah i mean i agree with um all three there um so just to to come from a, a moderately different angle i think uh, certainly from from our case we've got um almost 10,000 people in the organization. Um, and so that culture where you're getting everyone in the organization who are obviously focused on their own job to appreciate that data is one of our most important assets is, it's a it's a kind of what seems like a simple step, but actually really challenging when it comes to trying to um, engage with that many people on the right level. And, you know, we spend a lot of lot of money creating data and we we gain an awful lot of um of value from having data so it's really fundamental that we look after it as one of our core assets along with all of the other assets we have so yeah kind of shifting that culture from data being an add-on to the job to actually the job isn't done until the data is done especially in this modern world when we rely on data so much i think it's really critical to doing data quality well and takes a lot of effort from leadership to to change that culture and it's a very slow thing but you you see how it as that accelerates then data is managed better and, and and quality will improve so yeah that's what i was thinking so a couple of responses there about uh, leadership buy-in um 
trying to relate back to the service provision. And Nicole, you've kind of led into the second sort of round table question there, which is um, what advice would you give to someone starting out in data quality? Um, not quite a blank sheet of paper because we've got these events and uh, the data quality framework and so on. Um, but what advice would you give to the people starting out in data quality? I think I the sort of You've main touched on it already, yeah. Oh, would have been understand the why. I think you know it's very easy to say we should be doing data quality, and it almost seemed like a stick, maybe. Um, but actually, there are a lot of carrots, even if they're not always mm. immediately obvious. Um, and I think that when you know when we really put it back to the people using the data, the customers, the users, and really why that's important or enabling the outcomes that we enable, it it makes it almost hard to argue with why you should be doing it. And that gets that's kind of your first step to getting the buy in. And then you can obviously think about the how, um, but at least then you all feel like you're pulling in the same direction. So that comes back to the earlier point about improved data quality having zero cost. Um, yeah. yeah. Benefits in other words, yes, yes. Uh, any other points on um, how to get started? I think mine was similar, um, Charles. So um, I think it's talking the organization's language rather than da data techie mm. language, because it's an instant turn off, I think, as Teresa mentioned, you know, the policeman didn't come into work to to look after data quality. They've got their own focus. So I think it's really getting in the mindset of the organization that the, the outcomes that they're trying to achieve and then understanding how you can help them achieve those outcomes through better data. Um, so yeah, yeah, talking in that language, I think, is is really key. So let, getting to know that that kind of um, that arena, I think, is really really useful to to start off with. I, I'm conscious of living with teachers um, here that um, data becomes a bit of a dirty word in some professions. Um, so it'd be interesting. I mean, you said they're outcomes. What other words do you find you're using? We talk about value a lot. So, okay. um, you know, what value does that data represent? And, um, you know, and that value can be different depending on what your role is and how you're using the data. But um, so we do, that's one of the things I would say, it probably links in with what Nicole and Simon both said, you know, understanding the value of the data and then understanding what are the operational and strategic implications then of poor data quality. Mm -hmm. So that would be some of the language that we would, that we would use. Yeah, and Therese, just coming back to that other, the other question there, um, what would, advice would you give to someone starting out in data quality? Um, probably the same answer, to be honest, uh, but understanding the value of data, um, particularly when Simon was talking about, you know, understanding what it means to um, users of the data and understanding the difference, excuse me, <coughs> between sort of data creators and then your, the data users and, and how those relationships work, I think is really, really important. So for me, it's, it's the value and also then how the data then flows through your organisation to see where the data quality pinch points might be. Thank you. And Andy, do you have anything to add on that? I'm getting started. I I think I think I think as a starting point, I think it's understanding what is already being done elsewhere within your organisation. Are there things already in place that you may need to fit in with, um, and and not necessarily trying to tackle this in isolation? Are there other are there other policies? Are, is there other education going on? Is it, you know if looking at understanding what, what the root causes of your, of your of your data quality issues are. They, they typically come down to either the, the system itself, the users of that system, or any any additional processing that's done to that data to to to, to report on it. I think it's understanding what what's already in place in those places, what who what governance policies do you have in place, what what procedures are in place, what do, does everybody understand their, their their rules and requirements around data quality and what's expected of them? And thinking, getting some of those fundamentals in place, and uh, it's it's not all just suddenly about having a strategy. I think it's 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 more more on the, on the ground how how you communicate that that message to the people who are actually responsible for it. I mean, in the NHS. I, I mean, Simon mentioned 10,000 users. I dream of just having 10,000 users. <laughs> I think it worked out we've got something like 1.3 million people able to create data quality <laughs> issues in the NHS, and that's, that's quite a few to tackle. Thank 